What's up, Marvel Snappers? Welcome to another Math Breakdown. Today we are going to take a look at Agatha and the odds surrounding her unique effect. Agatha starts in your hand and plays cards for you. This is a very strange card, and there are some pros and cons to this effect. Pro 1, at 14 power, Agatha is big. Only four other cards at the time of this recording have a printed power greater than or equal to her own. Each of these cards also have drawbacks of their own. Pro 2, Agatha starts in the opening hand in addition to your normal starting hand. On turn 1, you will have five cards in hand and every draw, including the opening four draws, will be from an 11 card deck. This table shows how Agatha increases the odds of drawing a desired card by the given turn. With America Chavez in the deck, your first 8 draws in a typical game are from a 10 card deck, which is a massive boost to consistency until turn 6 where you are guaranteed to draw the Chavez. Now the con. Agatha is bad at playing the game. Anyone who has experienced the super rare Ego location knows how good the AI is at playing our decks. Like Ego, Agatha will play a card if possible and won't just pass the turn. One unique thing about Agatha is she will play herself onto the board given the opportunity. Also, if she is no longer in your hand, she stops playing the game for you. Now there are a few ways we can manipulate the game to regain control from Agatha. One of those ways is Wave. If Wave is the only 3 cost card in your hand on turn 3, Agatha will play her, and then on turn 4 she will play herself. This gives us control back for turns 5 and 6, plus you got 14 power onto the board on turn 4. Another option is Lady Sif, who discards the highest cost card in your hand. If Agatha is the only 6 cost card in your hand, Lady Sif will be guaranteed to discard her, giving back control for turns 4, 5, and 6. We can even leverage a card like Ghost Rider to bring Agatha back to life, giving us that 14 power to a location of our choosing. If Lady Sif and Wave are the only 3 cost cards in the deck, we can pretty consistently regain control. Without Chavez, we have an 81.8% .8 chance to draw either of these cards, and with Chavez, an 86.7% chance. One thing to note is you need to avoid having cards that cost less than 3, so you can't draw a card Agatha could play instead as she is not guaranteed to play on curve. Enter Domino. If you still want to have a play on turn 2, you can include no 1 cost cards and have Domino as the only 2 cost card. Agatha will be guaranteed to play Domino on turn 2. Now this does have a negative impact on consistency since we will lose one of the draws that could be Lady Sif or Wave. With Domino we lose about a 3.4% chance to have our desired turn 3 play. These calculations assume America Chavez is in the deck. Without Chavez you lose roughly 5% on both numbers. The 3.4% differential is minimal and may be worth it for the extra 3 power on board. This would be a typical Agatha shell, Domino being the only card less than 3 cost, Wave and Lady Sif being the only 3 cost cards, then America Chavez and Agatha being the only 6 cost cards, as including any other 6 cost cards could prevent Lady Sif from discarding Agatha. The other 6 spots in the deck can be a variety of 4 and 5 cost cards that you can build a consistent game plan around. Fun fact, if you pull a card out of the deck with Jubilee and get Magic's effect to turn a location into Limbo, you will see all of the cards in the deck thanks to Agatha. Agatha is both unique and fun. When she is in control, it can be a roller coaster of emotions, especially if there are locations you don't want her to make early plays to. She is also not as unplayable as it may seem at first. In my opinion, the deck is not very competitive yet, as the selection of 4 and 5 cost cards are not quite strong enough on their own. That said, Agatha decks can definitely win games. As more cards get added to Marvel Snap, there is a chance that Agatha becomes a very real deck. Even the inclusion of a card like Zabu lets an Agatha deck thrive on being packed with 4 cost cards and gives Agatha a much more straightforward game plan even if you can't regain control as soon as possible. 
Agatha will always stumble if the sequencing of cards matter, but the draw consistency she can add is something to definitely keep an eye on. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything or if you disagree with anything from this video. Your feedback is always appreciated. If you have any other math-related ideas you'd like explored, put those in the comments too. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.